Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at choosewood.com. Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. I'm Sarah Fenske. Here's a sobering statistic. Only 10% of domestic violence shelters allow pets. That means far too many people fleeing abuse have to give up animals with whom they've formed meaningful bonds. 52% of victims who check into shelters leave their pets with their batterers, according to the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence. And sometimes those animals are themselves at risk of abuse. Several academic studies have found that more, more than 40% of abused women report threats to harm their pets in addition to themselves. The fear of that happening to a beloved animal left behind, researchers say, can make women less likely to leave a bad situation. Those facts are a serious concern for St. Louis-based Purina. Its Purple Leash project aims to help domestic violence shelters with pet-friendly options, and it's already making a big impact at one shelter right here in St. Louis. Joining me in studio to talk about it is Nina Lee Kruger. She's the president of Purina. Nina Lee, welcome to the show. Thanks. Great to be here. We're also joined by Karen Kirk. She's the executive director of Lydia's House. Karen, welcome to the program. Thank you. Excited to be here to talk about this. Has the lack of pet-friendly domestic violence shelters impacted you? Give us a call at 314-382-8255. That's 382-TALK. Or you can send us a tweet at STL on air or email us at talk at STL publicradio.org. Now, Nina Lee, first, what is the impetus for the, purp the Purple Leash Project? That is a great question. So at Purina, we truly believe that pets and people are better together. And as the industry leader and pet owners ourselves, we feel like we need to stand up and be advocates for domestic abuse survivors. When you look at the statistics, and when I learned these statistics, it was shocking. One in three women and one in four men will be subjected to domestic violence. Wow. 48% will not leave their situation because they have a pet and they're feared it will be harmed. And only 10%, 10% of the shelters are pet friendly. So it was a simple decision for Purina to step up and create the Purple Leash Project. And how long ago was that something you launched? So Purple Leash, we just launched this year in partnership with Red Rover. But we have been involved, been involved in domestic abuse situations uh, for the last five years. We started in New York and created and worked with some shelters there. And we realized, really, this was a national problem. And so we needed to figure out a way to make that go national. And that's where we partnered with Red Rover. And so you brought this lovely Purple Leash here into the studio. Um, um, how does this work? Is this something that, that I can purchase and it makes a contribution? Or? So the way that it works is we do have some purple leashes available at Purina Farms, um, but you can also go on purpleleashproject.com and make a donation to Red Rover, and they will send you a purple leash. And then you can go create that bond with your dog and take it out for a walk. And for those um, who haven't paid attention to this issue, what is Red Rover? Red Rover is an organization that partners with shelters nationally um, in general, and we're working with them to help make the, some of these pet friendly. Oh, okay. We currently have uh, pet friendly shelters and all but five states. So we're working to close that right now. Wow. So you're making a pretty big impact here. Yes, you said this has been on the radar for five years and you've already got 40 something states covered. Yes, we actually just uh, worked with the shelter in Maine last month. So we, we have five more, but really we're not going to stop there because we really need the majority of pet sh of shelters to be pet friendly for these, these cases. So locally, um, you have worked with Lydia's House. Uh, tell us how they came on your radar. So Lydia's House is a remarkable organization here in St. Louis. It just does an outstanding job with survivors. And so a couple years ago, we, we got in touch with them, and they really embraced the idea of being pet friendly because they think they realized that their survivors um, were looking for a place to bring their pets as well. And so we've partnered with them to create, um, I believe, four units so far that are pet friendly. And in one of their facilities, we've even created a dog park. Oh, wow. So Karen Kirk, this is obviously your area of, um, of specialty as the executive director of Lydia's House. Um, what is the overall focus of, of what you guys do? Is it solely domestic violence? Or? Lydia's House provides transitional housing for abused women and their children who are victims of domestic violence. So it's our goal to be able to house them for up to two years at absolutely no cost to them so they can financially get back on their feet 
feet and get to safe, independent living. Um, that's our goal. And when I hear shelter, I think of one big barracks with bunk beds in it. It sounds like you've got a much different setup. Tell us a little bit without giving away too much info of, of what kind of housing these women get. Sure. So shelters are wonderful. St. Louis has amazing domestic violence shelters here. Unfortunately, shelters and transitional housing are different in the time that the victim stays there. Um, shelters provide 30 to 60 and possibly 90 days of shelter. But if you can imagine being a woman that has to leave in a minute's time, you grab your children, you grab a garbage bag, maybe a bag to place your items in, and that's what you walk away with. So it's very difficult to get back on your feet in 30 to 60 days. Shelters are wonderful because they're that immediate attention that they need, that immediate safe shelter. But what happens is a shelter contacts us or an emergency room or law enforcement, and they let us know that they have someone interested in staying at Lydia's house. And so we'll go meet with the family. We'll tell them about our programming and what's available and resources that are there. And they make that decision themselves to come to us. And so when they do, we offer every service you can imagine. St. Louis is one of the most wonderful cities in the country that provides so many resources that are needed. So we basically wrap that family in resources and provide anything and everything that they need. Give us an example. What kind of resources? Um, you're looking at, we provide advocacy for legal and um, criminal um <laughs> for legal resources. We provide counseling and therapy, after school programming. We connect them to food pantries and clothing pantries. We connect them to educational resources if they want to further their education. We connect them to nonprofits that teach them how to manage their finances and how to budget. Um, and, and our goal is to help um, them get a better job and to provide more income for their family now because they're a single family now. And so that's the most interesting thing is to watch them progress for two years. And that's a great amount of time to have, you know, given to you to um, place yourself in a better, safe yeah, place Yeah, really get back on survive. your feet, you I do. imagine. That's you terrific. Do. So you're now in this two-year relationship with Purina. Uh, what kind of changes has that led to at Lydia's house? This relationship with Purina has made an amazing difference because what we know is when a domestic violence um, survivor seeks to leave their abuser, they have to make choices. And their first challenge is to find housing for themselves and their children. But that second challenge is there's not a lot of shelters or housing out there that provide pet-friendly spaces. So this power and control that's made through the abuser using a pet is quite effective as threatening that survivor that if you leave or if the children are not behaving the way I want to behave, sometimes that abuse of that pet is very effective in controlling. I imagine. So we want to make sure that that woman doesn't have to make a choice because of that pet. That pet's found to be one of the most crucial emotional support systems for a child. It's an emotional support system for that woman because what we know is during that abuse, maybe that's child's hiding in a closet holding on to that pet, and that pet is safety. So we don't want another choice to have to be made because of a pet. So Lydia's House stepped forward with the help of Purina, and they provided funds and volunteers on our property to help us renovate four apartments to pet-friendly apartments. And it has been an, a, beautiful, a beautiful renovation on our property. They came in and they replaced all of the flooring in the apartments with impervious to water systems. Very important. Correct, right. <laughs> um, they changed the colors of the apartments to pet-friendly soothing apartments, which are beautiful. They also took that additional step to change some of our garden areas where our women and children love to learn how to grow their own fruits and vegetables. Um, but they built this amazing dog park beside our apartments. And this gives that space for that dog to be off their leash, to have time to run and play before it goes back into the apartment for the night. That's huge, because apartments can be hard for dogs. They are. Plus, it's communal living, and so these families are living around each other, so that pet's generally on a leash most of the time. Mm. So there's beautiful benches out there. They helped in, help enhance our fencing system so the animals can't get out. So now our women don't have to make a choice to leave that pet behind. So we're excited to partner with Purina. 
and make it a special place for our families to come. It's just been an amazing partnership. And when you, you take a look at the role that pets play in family life and the comfort and support, like she was mentioning, it's just a no-brainer for us to get involved and to help. And think about, if we think about just our everyday, you know, we were just talking how when we come home, our dogs greet us and they bring us so much happiness and joy. And think about a time that's trying and how important it is to have that family member, that pet there, that could also aid in that comfort and support. And those pets are cherished members of a family. So when a woman and her children need to leave, they feel like they're living, leaving a cherished part of their family behind. And they're concerned that that pet will be killed, harmed, threatened, and they don't want to leave that pet. So many times, unfortunately and sadly, they stay behind because of that. So then their lives are in jeopardy. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's just such an unfortunate situation and so good to see this solution for, for at least some people. I did want to note, we did get a call from somebody, and I think he made a really good point. He's a male abuse victim, abuse victim survivor, and he called in and said it's important to acknowledge that men are victims of domestic violence as well, and he agrees that it is unfortunate pets have to be left behind, and he makes a great point there, and I know sometimes I use um, language that is not precise, and that I'm apologizing for to those of you listening who have dealt with this as, as men. It's certainly an issue for, for everyone. Absolutely. So now we did speak with Jill and she's a Lydia's house member living in one of these pet friendly apartments. Uh, Jill's dog Scarlett is a 10 year old lab mix. Jill has had her since Scarlett was 12 weeks old. Scarlett is an athlete. She's a dock diver. Her record jump is 23 feet. Scarlett is my lifeline. She's I always tease her and say she's my BFF, which is my beast friend forever. Um, I left with pretty much nothing except a dog and a car, and that was my um, my parting gift, I guess, when the when the smoke cleared from the ruins of any life I had ever had. Those were the two things that I had to call my own, and I would have given up my car before I would have given up my dog. Now, Jill says that Scarlett is also a domestic violence survivor. They were victimized by the same man. Jill said that Scarlett's well-being was a big part of what compelled her to leave the relationship. Scarlett ended up with a lot of health issues from the trauma and emotional stress that she had been through. So we've been uh, fighting some health issues with her. She ended up having to go to a specialist and, you know, at at Lydia's house, I'm safe here, and she's safe here, and it's made a big difference for both of us. If I had a choice of, you know, not being able to leave, if I couldn't take my dog, I'd still be there. Now, Jill said that when she decided to live in a house for domestic violence survivors, she could only find one home that allowed dogs at that time, and it was in Kansas City, and it was always full. So Jill spent an entire year couch surfing, staying at friends and family's places until she found Lydia's house. I've slept on couches. I've slept on mattresses on the floor. I've slept on dining room floors. But not everyone has that option. And, you know, to me, like I said, Scarlett is not optional. I made a commitment to her, and she and I are a team. So if I was going, she was going. Karen Kirk, is that a common attitude among women who are dealing with abuse, that they're not going to go until they can find a place that will take their dog? Absolutely. There's just absolutely no choice. They're making choices. And people always ask us, why don't you just immediately leave? And this is one of the major choices. And we've got to remove that roadblock. And so Lydia's house partnering with Purina is removing those roadblocks. And that's why our partnership has been fantastic. And that's also why we're partnering with Red Rover. We're offering $500,000 in grants to help shelters become pet friendly. And it can be overwhelming for a shelter to think about it. And Karen, you probably went through this a little bit, but it's really not that difficult and it could be simple. And we are willing to step up to the plate and help shelters become pet friendly. I imagine that when you're dealing with multiple dogs um, and they're coming from situations where they have sort of been trained to be on high alert, this this could really add some complication to a shelter um, or even an apartment type situation. Karen, is it hard to sort of mitigate all these potential dog on dog controversies, dog on people controversies? Your job probably got exponentially harder here. Well, we thought it was going to. And when Purina came in and offered all of their resources to us, we realized there was a pathway for us to make this happen. There was a lot of thought put into this. We were, we were afraid to take that first big step. But with Purina being there for us, we felt like we needed to. 
50% of the women at Lydia's house tell us stories about their animals being abused. Mm. And probably half of that 50% left their animals behind because of their children. So we know that it was crucial for us doing what we do in the community is to make sure we continue to remove those roadblocks and we're going to do it. And it's not been, that big, not been that big of a challenge for us. Amazingly, knock on wood, has gone smooth so far. Um, we do have pet policies in place, you know, and so we abide by those. But these pet-friendly apartments are together. So it's not like these pets are living in other apartment buildings that have little children and waking them up at night. So they're used to each other in the buildings. And so far, so good. And we're hoping to continue that. So I understand you have four at this point. Um, is there a waiting list for those? Or at this point, if somebody needed one, could you get them right in? Um, well, we do have a waiting list. But sometimes that waiting list is just a matter of days. Okay. And hopefully they're at a shelter or somewhere that they're safe. Um, fortunately, from Purina. They gave us an opportunity to apply for a grant from Red Rover for a new another two additional par- apartments. So we'll be making that happen before summer of this next year. So you'll be getting up to six. That's yes, great. We're, and we're going to continue. I mean, it's our it's our strategy to make sure that there's no one out there that has to leave a pet behind. So Nina Lee Kruger, um, for this Purple Leash Project, if our listeners want to help with this, what would be the best thing they could do at this point? So we have two really simple ways to do it. And the first really is all about building awareness about domestic abuse, which is really what this month is all about. And so we're encouraging people to take their dog for a walk, take a picture, and then uh, post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag Purple Leash Project, and then tag it to a few of their friends and actually encourage this to happen because awareness is really the first step to solving this problem. Secondly, as I mentioned before, go to purpleleashproject.com, make a donation to Red Rover. You'll get a great leash that you can use to take your dog for a walk, but it's also helping an outstanding, wonderful cause. Well, this is all great, very practical information about what you can do to help on what is, frankly, a really troubling problem. So uh, Nina Lee Kruger of Purina, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. And Karen Kirk of Lydia's House, thank you so much for sharing the stories of, of what you guys are up to. Thank you, and thank you for bringing awareness. And we did want to say to our listeners, if if you were interested in this segment, we're also talking about the role that emotional support animals play on a show next week. So if you have an emotional support animal and you'd like to talk to us about what was the process of certification or how it improved your well-being, you can email us at stlpublicradio.org. Oh, sorry, talk at stlpublicradio.org. Or you can leave us a voicemail at 314-516-6397. That's 314-516-6397 to share share your story and that'll help us with our coverage. This is St. Louis on the Air on St. Louis Public Radio, 90.7 KWMU. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at choosewood.com.